Hello everyone, Colin Kanat for Woodwork Web. I'm in the middle of a, a number of projects right now, but I'm finding it increasingly frustrating to find the kind of table saw blade. I change table saw blades a lot, and I'm, I'm frustrated trying to find the right blade that I need for the job. So I've decided to stop everything in the middle of my projects and make a blade holder for all of my uh, table saw blades. Now, I saw in one of the magazines a couple of years ago um, some trays that you can pull out, and that doesn't work for me. I also saw a rack where you can actually stack them, and I think that's what would work for me. And that's what I'm going to build today. But the reason that it's so important that your blades are stored properly is because all of the blades you buy now have carbide on them. And carbide is like a, it's like a crystal, a crystalline substance and the problem with carbide is that if you hit it with metal or hit carbide to carbide if you hit it too hard or bump it it will chip in fact sometimes you'll lose an entire tooth it's very fragile that way the good thing with carbide is that it's very heat resistant and it stays sharp for a long long time and that's why they use it but if you don't stack your blades with something cushioning between them I use cardboard and paper and that's why it's so hard to find them those blades those the teeth on those blades can chip if they if they hit a little bit too hard so you do, you do have to be very careful with them and that's why it's important to have a proper place to stack your blades the table saw holder that I want to make is going to hang on the wall and I've just got some scrap pieces of wood here. I've just cut them to length and basically what's going to happen is these, these pieces of wood I'm going to cut slots in them so that the blades will sit at an angle on the board. And I've done a couple of you can see I've done a couple of tests here to see what the best angle is. This is uh, 30 degrees, this was 40 degrees. I didn't like this angle because I couldn't see the blades as well. This took up a little bit less room. So I'm going to use a 30 degree angle and I'm going to cut slots in these two boards that I showed you. So I'm going to cut slots in all of those all the way down, measure them and cut slots all the way down. And I'm going to do that on the bandsaw and then there's going to be two slots on each side and the, and the blades will just slip into each one of those slots. Now I've determined that the blades need to be two inches apart. So I've set my digital protractor at 30 inches or 30 degrees rather and locked it. And now I'm just going to go down this board and mark every one of these slots at 30 degrees so that I can cut it on the bandsaw. Now there's a couple of things I had to consider when I was designing this and you can see the slots there that I've made the marks for and that will sit on there like that and that one like that and the blades will then sit in in that fashion. But I had to consider that for example this is one of my chippers from my dado set and in order for it to sit in there this width has to be seven inches otherwise it will fall through if it's too wide and if it's too narrow it it's unstable for the blades to sit in there so consider your your dado blades there's a one of the sides of the dado blades there's the chippers and also I have both a combination of thin kerf and industrial and the industrials are are full usually about a full eighth compared to a thin curve which is more like a sixteenth. So I've had to make all of these slots 
about an eighth of an inch wide and because of that when I cut them on the bandsaw I'm going to have to make two passes on each one but the other thing and the last thing to consider is when this gets set up on this piece of plywood here to get ready to mount on the wall it's going to be screwed in from behind and so I need to make sure that I leave enough room for screws to pass through here without hitting the blades and so the next thing is we're off to the bandsaw to start cutting all of these slots okay I've clamped both sides of the uh, slotted boards together so that I can make all of the cuts with one just with one pass and I'm gonna have to move that because I can't cut all the slots so I'll have to move that um, clamp part way through so let's start cutting a couple of slots here So there's the rack and the chippers fit nicely into the lower racks, they're easy to get. All of the blades fit in the slots, the thick curve and the thin curve. And what I like is when they're in there, they're, 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 they're steady in there, they're, they can't fall out of there, they can be bumped out if they're hit hard enough, but they're nice and stable in there. The next thing now is just to mount it to the wall adjacent to the table saw so that all the blades are easy access. Okay, there's the blade rack all finished. All of the blades installed, or almost all of them. I still have one slot left here. I guess there's a blade in the table saw right now. That is all of the blades in there. Thin kerf thick kerf, they're nice and stable in there, you can see them but they're still at an angle that they don't take up too much room in the workshop. This is a great way of storing your blades. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Please visit our website for more tips and information.